and I'm going to only use, let's delete a bunch of cells. So we want to just focus on creating a cool checklist, which is going to be super simple. First, let's add the checkboxes. Insert checkbox, add a bunch of checkboxes. I want to add a, like a header up here. If it's Monday, Tuesday, or like a planning for a certain thing, I'm going to use with orange, no orange. Let's use this purple. I want to give it a little more space, insert rows above, insert row below. And then we're going to change that to green, this green background. I'm going to insert one more column to left, delete all that stuff in it, make it a little bit smaller, still make it green, have this header pop out. Let's do a couple of things to make it look good right away. We're going to view, show, and we're going to uncheck grid lines. We're going to still have everything selected, change it to Carla. I'm going to use the text Carla, but in the header, I think I'm going to use, Carla. we're going to merge these real quick. We're also going to take all of these items, give them a little extra room, make sure they are vertically aligned in the middle. The checkbox can stay as a checkbox. We're going to make that smaller. This items though, let's actually merge. No, we don't need to merge that. We just need to make each of these items bigger. We did do this purple. So let's do the exact same purple here. But the next one, we are going to do one shade darker. I think that's one shade. And now we can copy paste this and oops, do it all the way down. Let's add one more line there. Perfect. Let's add a little shade of green down here just to have a little end spot if we want we want to call this let's we'll call this monday all cap just for design sake we're going to put in the center we'll also make it much bigger that's nice bold it give it a nice bold there each of these items should also be in the center yeah middle and then left aligned so on monday we will get do some write a blog we might make this bigger now let's <laughs> make this let's go up to 15. great that looks good it is black text i think still so what we're going to do is we're going to change it to the not the very darkest but a dark purple i think i want to do that as well here change this text to a dark purple oh yeah and then command y and do that ever all the way down think on this one exactly the same text dark purple what we want to do facebook post maybe looks nice it looks a little this i'm wondering if the shade is a little wrong this shade of text is definitely wrong let's bring that down to that dark purple sweet okay we are let's name the sheet all now ultimate checklist designed by better sheets let's call it that better it's not just one sheet it's better sheets .co. We want to pop it out of the background a little bit more just for particularly these colors don't really do much. What I'm going to do is on the border, we're going to make a thick border, but only on the bottom and the right side. Also do want to make this the absolute darkest purple, which is here. Let's do that again on the right and the left. We're going to click the top border, but we're going to change it to the thinnest and the, and on the left side. So now when I move my cursor, We'll see that this has popped off a little bit, right? That little border just makes it a little, it gives it a little border. We're going to do exactly the same thing, but on the entire checklist here, not on each individual item. We're going to go thinnest is on the top and the left. We're going to click on the right, but we're going to change it to the thickest one on the right, bottom and the right side. Great. Now we have a nice looking checklist, right? We might even make these, depending on how much you want to write here we can make this wider and write more stuff I'm wondering if we want to make this more dynamic like maybe if we've checked off an item we're going to maybe ch change it what i like to do is change it a lot so let's go up to format conditional formatting let's do some conditional formatting here apply to the range we want to apply a range to b4 colon yeah actually c4 we want to keep it this, but you'll see why we are going to make it the darkest black background and we're going to make it the lightest white, not white, purple text. And now our format cell is going to be not 
thing. It's going to be custom formula equals B4 equals true. And now you'll see with this applied range, it only is checking off this B4 or not checking off. It's changing the B4. What we may need to do is add a dollar sign in front of the B. And what this is really hard to, uh, why is it not? It is true. What's going on? Maybe we need to do this or it was correct. Maybe it was correct. That's true. There we go. It was, I don't know why it was in red here. Perfect. So when this dollar, let me explain this dollar sign thing. If you don't know yet, then listen, if you do know why the dollar sign exists, then you can skip, skip a few minutes, a minute here. This applied range is going to be, we're going to apply the range, but this custom formula is going to be relative. If we change this B to absolute, both of the range B and C column will now look at the B column. But if we do not have it absolute, the B column will look at the B column, the C column will look at the C column. So right now it's relative. Adding the dollar sign is, is it's absolute. So perfect. Let's change this as well to C17, C4 to C17. And I think now with that, it will do it for each individual one. So now each time we select this, it's changing where it's looking. It's, it's keeping the B column, but it's changing the number here. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Play around with it because then I think it'll start to dawn on you how this works. If you've never done conditional formatting before with a custom formula, make sure you have an equal sign at the beginning. This is probably one of the strangest things I've ever seen. Yeah, I always have to add this equal sign at the beginning to say this whole custom formula is equal to this is the custom formula. I don't, I don't know why they do that, but yeah, click done and we have now a really cool checked off. Let's see, we could make this even cooler, right? We can, if we have, let's say add a progress bar to Monday, I'm going to insert a row below. I'm going to change this border. I love progress bars. We are really making the ultimate checklist here. I'm going to clear out that, do bottom left, top, change it again. And I want to have a little progress bar here. I'm going to make it a little smaller so as not to see what's going on. I'm going to merge these. And now we're going to do equals. Oh, what can we do? Spark line. Data is going to be count if B5 now to be eight. our data. Let's see. We have to do this in curly brackets. We have to do a bar graph, is it? Chart type comma bar and then max is what's 18 minus five plus 13. There we go. 13. But actually we can do, we don't want to do the count all as an absolute number. It's going to be count all B colon 18. So however many items there are, that's going to be the maximum. And a, what do we got? We got count if expected two arguments. Look at that again. Count if we're, oh. We need to say true. Spark line expected one and two arguments, but got three arguments. Double check this. Oh, do, 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 change that. I was like, ah, reference error. Spark line parameter two has mismatched column size expected two, actual four. Line C, huh? Mismatched column size. All right, this is so silly. This middle delimiter should be a semicolon. That's what I need to do there. Oh, we got a full graph. Let's uncheck all of these. 50%. Oh, perfect. It's working. So now we go finish. What is this? We've checked at number three. Oh, we need to change the te text on this. There we go. Okay. That's a third. That's two thirds. And that's done. But when it's done, we want to do something else, right? Maybe instead of if, instead of sparkling, we do if uh, count if, count if is equal to count all C5 colon C18. If that's true, oh, this is supposed to be equals. If they are the true, we'll just do done. And if not, then we have the progress bar. We'll make this a little bit smaller. And then we add all tasks done. Great. So we have this bar. Let's change the color. That orange sucks, right? How do we change the color? Go to our spark line, add another semicolon. I think it's going to be color one, comma, 
Let's change it to red or let's say green. Perfect. It's green now. We can wonder if, is there purple? Oh, yeah, nice. Purple's way better here. Oh, yeah, wait, all tasks done. But if we add another, add another task, boom, we have a nice little progress bar. Perfect. This is really getting to be the ultimate checklist here. If you watch this video and you want to see more things added to this, let me know. I'm happy to add more to the ultimate checklist. I want to sort of add a little Easter egg here. If this, if your third one is true, I want to say fire. Just want that to be a little, a little Easter egg to show up. Ooh. And if we get to the fifth one, if be, or not even fifth one, be 11. What do we want to show here? Let's show a little rocket. Let's add, make these much bigger. Let's add a strong thing. If nine, let's add a strong. And now we can even, we get there. Oh, we got a little strong. Oh, we're strong. So strong. We could be 11. Oh, we got a rocket. You know, we didn't make that big enough. We can center these a little to make them nicer. Maybe, maybe that's nicer. I don't know. Center them. Oh, well, this one can be way bigger. 25. But if we have not checked that off, we don't get our Easter egg, so we can, who will see strong, strong, strong if we get through all our tasks. Thanks for watching the video. I hope this has become the ultimate checklist for you. Get a copy. You're a Better Sheets member if you're watching this on bettersheets.co. Get a copy of it. Copy the sheet. Take it with you. Make it your own. Make it your own colors. Have a good one. Bye.